Abigail! Jack! Anyone here? Anyone home? Oh, darling. I never thought I'd see this day again. You no good hillbilly piece of shit! I thought you was dead! I thought you was dead, John, huh? Where you been? Where you been? You know where I've been, darling. You know! You saw Dutch, didn't you? Yeah, I saw him. And Bill? Yeah, I saw him too. And you didn't go back to him? I left that life. Just as you left yours. How'd they treat you? Oh, I can take care of myself, John. One guard got funny on me one time, but I wasn't so ladylike and he didn't try it again. Nor no one else. How's the boy? Oh, like you. And like me. Well, he's like a kid growing up without a father. That ain't fair. What is fair? Well, some trees flourish, others die. Some cattle grow strong, others are taken by wolves. Some men are born rich enough and dumb enough to enjoy their lives. Ain't nothing fair, you know that. We tried to change. I mean, ain't that what you're supposed to do? We did change. And it's over now. Jack! Jack, come here, boy. Hello, sir. Come here. How you been? Coyotes ate all the chickens and poachers took the cattle. I tried, father. I tried. I know you did, son. I know. And don't you go blaming me, boy. Don't you go blaming me. I ain't blaming no one, old man, but since you're still alive, there's four mouths to feed. And no cattle. That's a nice way to greet somebody. Why don't I get to warm and tender embrace? Consider the fact I ain't put a bullet in you, your embrace, old man. You were supposed to look after the place. I did. Well, I did my best. Thing is, there was too many of them. Uh, I thought you was dead. I wasn't drinking. Hold your excuses until you figured out which one to use. Jack. Go get your bags packed, boy. We got work to do. We leave in the morning. Go on. Yes, sir. Where are you going? Well, it's getting kind of dark now, but in the morning we've got to go get ourselves some more cattle. I've got friends at McFarland's ranch. It's over in Hennigan's stead who can sell us some. Now, Abigail, I hope you learned to cook. <laughs> Yes. Didn't I say, rather than some prison, they actually kept me incarcerated in a cooking school for young ladies. Howdy, Paul. Are you ready? Let's haul out.
Let's go! How you feeling, Jack? I'm feeling fine, sir. We got a decent ride ahead of us. I've never been to Hennigan's stead. How do you know these ranchers? I met them while I was away. The McFarlands are good people. We need folks we can trust right now. Met them how? I was sick and they looked after me. Sick how? You sure got a lot of questions. I, I don't often get a chance to ask them. Was it a gentleman's complaint? What do they call it? The morning drip? Good God, boy, no! Where do you learn these things? Uncle told me about it. Well, he'd know, the dirty old fool. No, I just got weak for a while. Acted foolishly, got in trouble. Guess I was a little out of practice. Hey, Paul. What? Where were you all that time? Where'd you go? What'd your mother tell you? She said it was some kind of important government business. That's about right. Some people thought I owed them some favor. Why did they take us away? They thought it wasn't safe for you here by yourselves. Those men harm you? I uh, know. They're okay. Some of them even told me stories. I think I'd like to be a government man one day. Or, or a politician. I'd rather you chose an honest profession. Well, like you, you mean? I know I ain't been the best father, Jack. I made some bad choices. But all that, that life, it's over now. Paul, was it something to do with Mr. Dutch and Bill? Why you went away? Who told you that? I kept hearing people say their names, Th that's all. Yeah, I caught up with Bill and Dutch. We had some old business needed settling. Where are they now? They're gone, son. We won't be seeing them again. They were angry at you, weren't they? That's why we had to leave. They was just good men who turned bad. I'll explain it to you one day. And what does that make you? I guess I'm a, a bad man who tried to be a good father. I don't know. Every man has a right to change. A chance of forgiveness. Ain't that what the good book says? You've never read me the good book, sir. Well, I imagine that's what it says. So, you ready to learn about herding cattle? I've never seen you herd anything, Paul. Apart from the odd pack of drugs. The McFarlands were good to me, and I helped them out in return. I learned a few things along the way. Wait till you see their ranch, what ours will be one day. I read in the newspaper their ranch is dead. Soon it'll just be factories and businesses around here. You shouldn't believe everything you read. You? I was thinking, maybe I might be a businessman. I thought you wanted to be a writer. Well, I could be both. A rich industrialist who writes novels about the Old West on the side. You can be whatever you want, son, but for now, let's concentrate on getting some food on the table. Unless you're planning on striking literary gold in the next day or two, that is. We shouldn't talk now, Jack. We don't want to waste all our breath before we even get there. Mr. McFarland. Whoa! John Marston! There's a face I thought I'd never see again. 
So have our public servants in Blackwater sent you back on another homicidal errand to protect and save us from Lord only knows what? Thankfully not, sir. I was hoping you might still be able to sell me some cattle. My boy, it would be a pleasure. Bonnie's out in the crowd now. She'll be more than happy to help you. <laughs> Take care now, Mr. McFarland. Good luck. Let's go. All right, Jack. You're going to have an important job. I want you to lead the herd while I drive them from the back. Keep us all moving in the right direction. Sure, Paul. I can do that, no problem. Good Lord, do my eyes deceive me. A devil walks among us. I said I'd be back when this was all over, Miss McFarland. After the barn fire, you remember? Of course I remember. I just didn't believe a word of it. So, you've come for some cattle? Yeah. I'm finally starting up my farm again. Or, trying to at least. You'll be fine. You've been taught well. Come on, then. Settled our differences. Come on. So, is this your boy? Yeah. Say hello to Miss McFarland, Jack. Hello. Ah, the arrogance of you. He gets a little fur on his lip, and he thinks he knows best. All of a sudden. <laughs> Must take after his father. Again, Miss McFarland, and thanks for Call everything. Me funny, you don't. Slow up. Yeah. All right, Jack, let's get him through the river. Come on. Don't look right. Stay back, son. I'll hold them off.
think that's all of it. Jack! Wait there! I'm coming! You all right? You're not hurt, are you? No. I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I wasn't scared, honest. Sorry you had to see that, son. Those men won't be stealing from anybody else. Jack! Head left up the road towards home! I know where I'm going, Paul. Let's go! Whoa! Slow down! Slow it up now. Son, we made it. You did real good out there. Go on, hit your horse and wait for me by the stable. Come. That's a fine herd we got ourselves. So we're ranchers now. Yep, I guess we are. Did a good job, son. Nice shooting. Thanks, Paul. Make a rancher of you yet. What you cooking? Same thing I've been cooking the past 15 years with the hope of poisoning you. Ain't working so well. <laughs> Not yet. I'll be honest, though. Tastes bad enough to kill a man. I never was much of a cook, but I did try to be a good wife. And you have been. Given what we was and what we came from, I think we've gone and done okay. I look at Jack. I look at him and I think we've been blessed. Maybe he can be something more. He's a good kid. He can be whatever he wants to be. He ain't gonna be no frontier gunslinger killing and running those gang, though. <laughs> that way's over. Railroads and government and motor cars and everything gone and done away with all that. And he ain't gonna marry no orphaned working girl running with a bunch of hucksters, neither. If he meets one like you, I hope he'll marry her. <laughs> Stop. For an illiterate gunslinger, you sure know how to make a girl blush. <laughs> God damn, Crows! John! You have got to go deal with them. They've broken into the silo again and are eating all the corn out from it. Of course, my angel. Wait. Get out of there! All right, all right. Go on! Scat! Shh. about that stew. John, we got a telegram from some lady friend of yours, a Bonnie something or other. Something you ain't telling me? Bonnie McFarland. She's a friend. Mm. Saved my life when I went after Bill and nearly got myself killed again. 
Oh, now you two's in the habit of sending each other letters. How very nice. It weren't nothing like that. What's it say? I don't know. I can't... Well, you know I can't read. Give it here. You read that thing out loud. I ain't hiding nothing. Dear Mr. Marston, stop. Need corn sacks, stop. Emergency, stop. Weevils and moths ate entire county supply, stop. Can you help? Not exactly the most romantic request, now, is it? I guess not. And she saved your life, you say? Yes, ma'am. Well, then you're gonna have to help her and her family out. We've got a plentiful supply of corn sacks over near the silo. Oh, about the one thing Uncle didn't manage to have stolen while we was gone. Okay. Hurry back, John. And John, what's she like? Well, uh, you know. A little bit like you, I guess. She's a woman in a man's world. my mind. I'm coming with you. Well, come on, man. Let's get going. I don't think I can let you go off again without me. Fair enough. I'm glad of the company. You only had to ask. Ask? I was waiting for you to ask me. I thought you'd want to keep an eye on the boy. Oh, while you were off cavorting with cowgirls in the next county? I don't think so, John Marston. You only just got home. That Jack has seen enough of me for a lifetime. So, did she marry this pony McFarland? No. What does she look like? I don't know. Pretty normal, I suppose. Normal? What? Normal like me? No. Normal as in two eyes, mouth, nose, that kind of normal. Besides, ain't no woman fine as you. A little flattery. Now we're finally getting somewhere. If you find yourself in a hole, First thing to do is stop Dick. Another pearl of wisdom from John Marston. I sure do miss those. I never took you for the jealous type, Abigail. I ain't jealous so much as curious. You heard what she wrote. It's just some corn. She saved my life and she was decent enough to me, so I owe her this much at least. How did she save your life anyway? found me half dead on the side of the road and took me to the doctor. Most folks would have left me there. Half dead from what? Bill didn't take so kindly to be visiting on him now. Bill never did like surprises. How was he? Same as he was when we left. Angry and dumb. Taking his revenge out on the world. People down there was really scared of him. Of Bill? You gotta be kidding me. He was only frightening if he was afraid of dumb fools. Bill worked so bad, but when Dutch went crazy, Bill took it hard. For a while, we all thought we'd found something right. A better way to live, but it was just a lie. So you saw before they did. Maybe, but they was still kind of a family. A family that left you for dead. You knew the truth, John, and they hated you for it. Where'd they take you? Who? Those government bastards. Where did they hold you and Jack? I ain't sure. They kept their eyes covered there and back. Can't have been too far from here, though. They treat you right? It ain't the first time I've had a gun to my head, John. You're forgetting your marriage proposal. Very fun. No, they learned pretty quick what would happen if they laid a finger on me. Sons of bitches. It wasn't them or being there. I didn't care about that. I've been in far worse situations. It was the wait. I didn't know if he was coming back. Of course I was coming back. You were only supposed to be gone for a couple of days. It took longer than I thought. The only thing Bill and Dutch was ever any good at was not getting caught. I started thinking you'd gone back to them. Crack that whip, John. Or we'll never get there. That life's over. I hope you're right. Bill, Javier, Dutch, they're all dead. It don't get more over than that. Thank you so much. We 
lost the entire harvest. Miss McFarland, I'd like you to meet my wife, Abigail. Oh, ain't you quite the gentleman all of a sudden. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Marston. Likewise, thank you for saving my husband's life and for teaching the miserable old goat some manners, among other things. I didn't teach him anything. I know better than to try to change a man. You should meet my father. Oh, people can change, Miss McFarlane. John and I have to believe that more than anybody. This is a decent first harvest for you, John. You should be proud. That's good land you got there. How are you feeling, Mrs. Marston? From what your husband told me, it must have been awful for you. I've been through worse, and I knew he'd be back before too long. He can't cook a meal to save his life. Abigail, in my darkest hours, when I was most homesick, just the thought of one of your rat meat stews kept me pushing forward. Well, about as amusing as a weeping saddle sore, ain't he, Miss McFarland? If you're gonna start yammering about women's work, John, I'd say you might be in the wrong company. I'd say so, too. I never felt so outnumbered.
We did good today, John. I guess I better go fix us something to eat. 